As many of you know, California leads the nation in many ways, including homelessness. A group of Republican lawmakers introduced more than a dozen bills to combat California's worsening homeless crisis. The group says they are pushing back against the state Democrats' heavy spending policies. Let's hear more about what the Republicans are proposing. A group of Republican lawmakers introduced their new legislative package called Act on Homelessness. The bills seek to address the state's growing homelessness problem. No more pricey programs that don't get results. Two of our proposals would require transparency to make sure that we are delivering on results. One would audit the state homelessness efforts to look not just at spending, but at results and outcomes. The group acknowledged that any proposal costs money, but emphasized that investments should result in improvements. The other proposal will require the governor to provide an annual report on state and local governments' homelessness efforts, so that we can see how effective these flashy programs really are. Another bill in the package seeks to provide addiction services for the homeless using opioid settlement funds to provide treatment for those having mental health issues. Our policy proposals will bring focus on providing mental health, drug, and alcohol treatment, growing a skilled workforce, increasing facility capacity, enforcing our laws rather than tolerating open drug use, and expanding federal and state housing first laws so that wraparound services can be required and not merely offered. The state adopted a housing first philosophy in 2016. The idea prioritizes placing homeless individuals into permanent and temporary housing, but critics point to the shortfalls of Los Angeles Proposition HHH, a 1.2 billion dollar bond measure also passed in 2016 to create 10,000 housing units. Only 1,122 have been created, according to a recent report by the city's controller. Similarly, San Francisco invested millions of dollars in providing homeless individuals tents as housing during the pandemic. The city distributed 226 tents across six locations, sheltering just over 300 people. The annual budget for these tents was $16.1 million, over $60,000 per tent.、Uh, the homeless folks、uh, that are trapped, living on the street, and their families don't care if solutions come from Democrats or Republicans. They just want to get their families healthy. Unfortunately, for too long in this building right here, the governor and our Democratic colleagues have made this a partisan issue. Governor Gavin Newsom announced in January that $12 billion in the state's proposed 2022-2023 budget will go toward permanent supportive housing and mental health services for the state's estimated 160,000 homeless individuals. At the beginning of March, Newsom announced his Care Court proposal. The program would compel treatment for people who are homeless, struggling with substance abuse or other behavioral health issues. But these lawmakers expressed concern with Newsom's plan. But what if they refuse? The problem is the law, and a court, even the Care Court, has to follow the law. And right now, the law says that they'll go right back into the criminal justice and conservatorship. Systems that are failing them today. Jamie, a former drug addict, spoke at the press conference about her experience with drug addiction. Thirteen years ago, she recovered through a treatment program which taught life skills. She says homeless people need treatment, not just the keys to a hotel room or apartment. I want to say that this bill that they're introducing could change lives because no one can make good decisions when they're using drugs or. They're in a mental health crisis from using drugs. You can't put drugs in your system and expect someone to make good decisions. It's impossible. The legislative package includes over a dozen bills, all of which are making their ways through the state assembly and senate. Cynthia Kai, NTD News, California. Workers at a major California oil refinery went on strike Monday. Chevron and the United Steel Workers could not come to a contract agreement after recent negotiations. But the rest of the California doesn't need to worry too much, as Chevron says, gas prices won't be affected. Over 500 workers at the Bay Area's Chevron Corporation refinery went on strike early Monday. Union workers at the plant in Richmond did not come to a bargaining agreement with Chevron, voting down the company's offer. Chevron refused to return to the bargaining table. 
The strike, organized by the United Steelworkers Local 5, began over safety concerns and demands for salary increases. They're tired of coming to work and uh, making a profit for these corporations and uh, having no consideration when it comes to their health and safety, when it comes uh, to their, uh, their, medica- their medical coverage, um, to their uh, hours, their wages fatigue. Chevron said in a Sunday night statement that it has negotiated for months and believes their offer to be fair. The company added that in Richmond, the union's demands exceeded what the company believes to be reasonable and moved beyond what was agreed to as part of the national pattern bargaining agreement. Chevron offered a 2.5% pay increase for its roughly 1,300 workers. White said the union asked for 5%, citing inflation and cost of living in the Bay Area. Despite negotiations failing, Chevron said in a statement it is fully prepared to continue normal operations. It also does not anticipate supply chain issues. Chevron wrote, we anticipate no issues in maintaining a reliable supply of products to the market. But if the strike shuts down the refinery, it could affect the already record high California gasoline prices. In Northern California's Bay Area, police announced that they solved a 45-year-old cold case. Closing the case came after the police established a cold case unit last year. California's Alameda Police Department said they have solved a 45-year-old cold case homicide. The announcement comes after an 11-month-long investigation by the department's cold case unit. The unit was established in April 2021 and led by two retired Alameda police sergeants and a retired Alameda police officer. We hope this model, this approach, can serve as a model for the rest of the country to help bring justice to the victims of over 260,000 unsolved homicides in the United States. In March 1977, 43-year-old Richard Bischel Sr. was stabbed 10 times during an attempted burglary while at home with his then 17-year-old son. The Korean War veteran died at the hospital from his injuries. Given new technology in forensics, police was able to identify Richard Curley Bernard, a serial burglar and rapist, to be responsible for the murder. The police found blood on the jacket in the suspect's home. The department said the suspect is now deceased. The victim's son, who was present at the news conference, conveyed his thanks to the police department on behalf of his family and late mother. Five people in Oakland lost their home to a fire in a tiny home community on Monday morning. A city council member called it unacceptable. Firefighters responded to a fire at 2nd Avenue and East 12th Street near the tiny home community of Lakeview Village. A fire spokesperson said three tiny homes were engulfed in flames when they arrived. A fourth was damaged but not destroyed. In 25 minutes, firefighters were able to bring the fire under control. No one was injured or killed. Council President Nikki Fortunato Bass said she was saddened that five people were displaced by the fire. She also said it was unacceptable. She added the site must be safe for clients, staff, and nearby communities. According to the fire department, the cause of this fire is currently undetermined, but based on existing surveillance footage, the fire is believed to be accidental. A private school in Southern California apologized for a video of preschoolers apparently chanting against President Joe Biden. The video shows a teacher leading the chant. One mother explains why she removed her daughter from the school. Here's more from NTD's David Lamb. In a video shared by one mother, an unnamed Southern California teacher asks students about the U.S. president. Who's our president? What do we want to do with him? Tina McFadden, the mother who shared the video to social media, said the preschool teacher sent the video to parents on February 18th. From the video, it's unclear to make out the last word of the student's response. But McFadden, whose daughter attended the school, said the students are saying out. Officials at the school said in a statement to parents that the school was sorry for any misunderstanding caused by the video. Earlier today, a video was posted that has since been deleted as it did not share our school and church philosophy of honoring and respecting authority, including those in government positions. This occurred at Turning Point, a private school in Norco, California, from a President's Day lesson. Now, as Americans, we have the right to believe in whatever we want. And the statement, if anybody believes in that, that's fine. That's their right to believe in that. However, it is not the right of the teacher 
to indoctrinate four and five year olds. McFadden said she withdrew her daughter from the school. It's unclear what disciplinary action was taken against the teacher, but McFadden said the teacher remains in the classroom because the school said she is repentant and has learned from her mistake. Turning Point is a nonprofit Christian school that offers a wide range of programs for preschool through sixth grade. NTD reached out to both the school and the mother for comment. McFadden says she's getting overwhelmed with all the requests at this time and needs to pause. David Lamb, NTD News, California. With the gas prices still sky high around the country, a number of California lawmakers are urging the governor to invest more in the state's oil. Let's hear more on what they have to say. Kern County's leading Republican lawmakers gathered at an oil extraction site on Monday to urge the governor to invest more in California's oil production. Time after time, they have stopped the innovation, the investment, so we could produce our own and become energy independent. This has got to change. The lawmakers called on Governor Gavin Newsom to reverse his commitment to renewable energy and instead approve permits to allow more drilling. Ever since Gavin Newsom has become governor, his role of not providing the permits, more than a thousand permits sit on his desk. So what does that mean? It means California, since he's been governor, has lowered production by 20 percent. That's 89,000 barrels a day. Earlier this month, Newsom pledged to end oil extraction by 2045, something he emphasized during his State of the State address. But these lawmakers disagree with Newsom's plan. The governor of California has thousands of permits sitting before him that could allow our state to produce hundreds of thousands of barrels a day that would allow our state to be energy independent. Fong said California needs to be able to produce its own oil without relying on imports. Now, I also want to emphasize the fact that our state is an energy island. Many people don't know that. And what, what I mean by that is that because of the lack of infrastructure, because of transportation costs, we cannot bring in oil from other states. Senator Shannon Grove cited the job opportunities the oil industry can provide. And we had a young lady came through the program that was from the Navigation Center. And she was from the, you know, M Street Navigation Center. And she says, you know, I don't read and write very well, but I can do this work. And she became a welder. And now she's providing for her family in the oil industry. She says these jobs can provide people a second chance at life. And another thing, 22% um, of the people that work in this industry that make well above uh, a six-figure income are second chancers. It stops recidivism. It lets people have a job, which is the greatest security that you can ever have, and a job is the greatest solution to poverty. Speakers at the press conference said if California is less reliant on oil imports, the state's high gas prices could see improvement. But as gas prices climbed to a new average high of $5.86 as of Tuesday, another oil-related partisan battle is taking place in Sacramento. How to relieve pain at the pump. Newsom and Democrats have put forth the idea of sending gas rebates. Republicans, however, are pushing for suspension of the gas tax. Cynthia Kai, NTD News, California.